Alright, so I asked you guys for some video ideas, and you guys got back to me, and a lot of you, surprisingly, wanted videos that aren't about Halo, Call of Duty, or Battlefield. You wanted me to talk about something else. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about Halo, Call of Duty, and Battlefield. I know what my fans want, I just choose to ignore it. In all seriousness, I really just had this idea pop into my head today, and I thought I'd talk about it because it's something on livestream that I said I would make a video about, and had forgotten to write it down, so... Thankfully, I remembered. At the beginning of this year, I made the switch to play my shooters on PC. And whether or not this was going to be a permanent change was sort of in the wind, but at the time, the control and flexibility of a mouse and keyboard was so much better than controller, you know, in contrast, that I had to stick with it. And I'm still sticking with it, I'm still enjoying it. But the question that I said I'd answer on livestream was, does aim assist bother me now more than it did when I first started? So basically is the novelty of using a mouse and keyboard over and now I'm able to see its limitations and I'm able to be properly frustrated with aim assist in games like Call of Duty and Halo. I'm gonna talk about this in the context of Call of Duty, then Halo, and then a little bit of Battlefield at the end because Battlefield doesn't have a crossplay environment. So it's gonna be a very, very brief conversation. First things first, Call of Duty. I have been playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Cold War on PC against console players and PC players alike, and has my opinion on aim assist changed? No, not really. Uh, I know aim assist helps in one-on-one -on -one gunfights at certain ranges, but up close aim assist gets really fucked up, at a distance aim assist barely helps at all, and I've simply played too much Call of Duty on controller, and in contrast to using a mouse, the mouse is better at all times, even with the strongest of aim assist pulls that sometimes you do, you know, get to experience that just kind of seem random because they always surprise me when they really happen because the person has to be at the exact right range, I have to be moving my feet at the time, and my sight has to be in the exact perfect spot for it to track them for a little bit, you know, and then that can sometimes get that person killed. But that is nowhere near the flexibility and versatility of a mouse and keyboard. It's just, it, it's nowhere near that. It's no substitute for control. The game occasionally giving you a pat on the back is no substitute for absolute control. All right, so let's say I go up against a controller user using aim assist in a sort of close to mid range engagement and uh, he wins. I might think that eh, aim assist probably helped him there. I'm the only target here. Aim assist doesn't help against multiple targets most of the time. You know, I'm at that right distance. He's moving his feet. That activates the aim assist. That might have really helped him in that engagement, but it doesn't bother me. It doesn't really get under my skin. I'd have to be pretty tired, pretty rusty, pretty tilted to be upset about that. Because I know at longer ranges or areas that I'm pre-aiming, I'm going to have more recoil control and more precision to shoot him next time. I know that in a sniper duel, his aim assist is going to be no match for the pinpoint control of a mouse. My ability to turn on him in close range and maintain accuracy, I mean that's the thing, right? When a controller player has their sensitivity turned up, they're trading accuracy. They can learn to overcome it, but they're overcoming it. They're not in an optimal state. They're having to overcome the downsides of analog sticks when they crank the sensitivity up. If they want accuracy, they have to turn that sensitivity down, but then they have to really control their engagements and they're not going to be able to turn on me and they're not going to have the same movement freedom that I am. Aim assist is a band-aid fix and most of the play styles that you do with the controller are to overcome the downsides of the controller. And that's usually for the comfort of the player and not for optimal versatility. I think a mouse's only real weakness is in close range encounters and that is still not the biggest weakness in the world, so no, my opinion hasn't changed. Call of Duty is a twitch shooter with a fast time to kill. I really, seriously, honest to God, do not mind controller players having a little bit of help in that scenario, because hell, they need it, because a mouse is just more better for that in every way. So uh, amazing grammar aside, let's move on to Halo. My opinion on aim assist in Halo is a little different. I think in Halo, the aim assist problem kind of exists. Uh, not to a large degree, and I do think mouse is still gonna have more flexibility, more versatility, and more speed. But Halo has a lot more of those one-on-one -on -one strafey gunfights. And those gunfights are heavily influenced by aim assist, or more heavily than other engagements. In Halo, you don't take the battle rifle and, you know, try to pop people past the range that the weapon is effective. 
you want to have those mid-range engagements. You don't want to be putting seven, eight, nine, ten rounds into somebody at a distance while they're taking cover and letting their shields recharge in between the firefight or in the middle of the firefight. But that's really where the mouse is at its best. Now, also in close range, the mouse's ability to turn on people while still maintaining good accuracy is fantastic. But Halo is so much about positioning and controlling your engagements that I really, I don't know, I, I feel like I'm a little bit disadvantaged in certain engagements against certain players. But obviously, and this goes for Call of Duty as well, this all comes down to skill. A good Halo player doesn't get himself or herself into a bad situation and then twitch shoot their way out of it. They maintain good situations. They maintain positions that keep people from shooting them in the back, that keep people from overwhelming and flanking them. If you're good at Halo, you're controlling the initial part of the engagement, more so reacting to when the engagement goes poorly, like what often happens in games like Battlefield or Call of Duty. In Halo, you're setting yourself up for success by going and grabbing that overshield, by going and grabbing that rocket launcher, that sniper, that shotgun, by going and grabbing a power position, by making sure you have a plasma grenade ready to throw at somebody if they enter a certain range. Halo is about knowing an enemy is about to come through a doorway and fragging them first. It's a lot less about snap twitch shooting and a lot more about preparation and then execution. So in those cases, aim assist is a little bit more beneficial because you're going to be doing a lot of those one-on-one -on -one gunfights. And you know, and your reticle is going to follow me while I'm having to aim at you in those close, you know, I'm trying to jump shot and crouch in the air and trying to, you know, not get locked onto by you. But you know, it just forces me to move around a bit more and control my engagements a tad differently and also just work on the consistency of my shot. Luckily, Halo is a longer time to kill. So if I'm smart, I'm going to be looking at the gunfight and going, okay, I, I missed two shots there. I'm over aiming to the left. I'm sort of under and over correcting when I'm, when I'm panicked and I need to not do that. And it's not like Call of Duty where if somebody gets the drop on you, they're likely going to kill you no matter if they're using a controller with or without aim assist, a mouse or a touchpad, you know, if they get a drop on you, they're going to drop on you. So that's important to realize. So I do think aim assist is a little bit more annoying in Halo, but not enough for me to genuinely complain about. Mouse and keyboard are still more flexible, and this goes into Battlefield as well. Battlefield doesn't have a crossplay setting or anything like that. So I've never really, I don't think, battled a controller aim assist player when playing Battlefield on PC, and I never really fought a mouse and keyboard player when playing Battlefield on console, at least as far as I know. But uh, I will say, mouse and keyboard, miles more accurate. Battlefield 4's gunplay in particular is so much more geared towards a mouse that it's not even funny. Recoil control, tap firing, distant shooting, all of that is better on a mouse, and so yeah, mouse and keyboard is much more liberating than on console. Certain weapons that I thought had a lot or a fair amount of recoil have seemingly next to none in comparison when I use a mouse. So. It has me a little bit concerned if Battlefield 2042 has crossplay. You know, how is that going to play out? What's the gunplay going to be like? What are they going to simplify? What's aim assist going to be like? Because Battlefield has a pretty gnarly lock on aim assist on console that I actually end up turning off because I find it to be kind of egregious. So to wrap this video up, my final opinion on aim assist is that I think less aim assist is better for players to actually maintain muscle memory instead of just sort of waiting for software to kick in. There are players in every video game that seem to wait for their aim assist to kick in before they start shooting, and they often lose gunfights because of it. So even though you might think that sounds like somebody that's using a soft aimbot, it's usually somebody that has no confidence in their own abilities to shoot, therefore not very good at the game. I think a little bit of aim assist slowdown should be in every console shooter because that's just basically dynamically changing your sensitivity once you've aimed at an opponent, which I think allows the player to make more of their own movements better. Any sort of snap lock-on, if it's too rough, I, I think is just, it it's, it's an insult to the player. Because controllers aren't so limited that you need the game to, you know, shift your screen over to an enemy. Really, you don't need that. So, I think that's a pretty good spot to end the video. I'll see you when I see you guys. Have a good day.